Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Monday, April 25th, 2022 public board meeting of the Kingston City Land Bank. Uh, my name is Mike Gilliard. I'm the executive director of the organization. We do ask that members of the public limit their comments no more than two minutes per speaker. And with that, I will hand it off to Daniel Cantor, our board chair. Hello, everybody. Um, real quick, let's do roll call. So your uh, name and physical location from which you are taking this meeting. I am Daniel Cantor. I am at 142 Clinton Avenue in Kingston. Bob. I'm Bob Dennison. I'm at 122 Wilson Avenue in Kingston. Bartek. Bartek, start I 354 South Wall Street in Kingston. Aaron. Aaron Chilowich, 75 Madison Avenue, Kingston, New York. Alana. Alana Berger, 146 Franklin Street in Kingston. Nate. Nate Hennigan, uh, 20 President's Place in Kingston. And Minya. Minya T. Jeanette, um, normally residing at 258 Main Street in Kingston, New York. Great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, where are you actually? I think we're actually supposed to say that, but I'm also curious. Mm -mm. No, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> if we break open meetings law, it's not on me. Um, so, uh, thanks everybody. Um, exciting month. I think we'll keep this meeting pretty fast. So, um, let's see. We, uh, construction continues apace over at 149 Greenkill. It's looking really, really beautiful. So um, there's gonna be a few weeks of sort of slow, not a ton going on because uh, they have outpaced the lead times of Pella and Simpson. So our doors and windows aren't coming for another couple weeks. And they're like, really getting close to done. Light fixtures are all installed. Plumbing fixtures are mostly installed. It's, it's a good time to come see it if you're curious. Um, on that note, uh, Owen and Mike, and I'm not sure who all else worked their tails off on getting the Franklin Street RFP out the door, I think on Friday, Friday, was that just Friday? Close enough. Um, so spread the word far and wide. Uh, I put it up on Instagram and Facebook this morning, but let everybody know and uh, hopefully we'll find a great contractor. William, real fast, um, can you just uh, say the physical location from which you are taking this meeting? It's the open meeting. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I'm at my house on 60 Cedar Street, Kingston, New York, Great. 12401. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So Franklin Street, uh, we have walkthroughs scheduled for the second and the fourth. We're hoping to vote on a proposal at our next board meeting, I think, yeah, and get that project moving. So that's exciting. Um, uh, neither here nor there, but we do have a new board member. William, thank you so much for joining. We're really excited to get to know you and work with you and all of that. So thank you, thank you for being here. Um, let's see. Uh, we were able to meet with uh, Forsyth, Forsyth Street Advisors and the Novo Foundation um, last week to go over their um, proposal for the Kingston Housing Opportunity Fund that, that they've been working on since not the beginning of the year, I think. Um, so I think that meeting went well. Uh, they naturally had some questions. I still have some questions, but um, I think it's a really exciting program and, and will help us sort of expand our reach beyond our, our little collection of houses. Um, and I think uh, in terms of individual properties, 38 post, we have finally <laughs> officially kind of rejected from the city of Kingston. We had told them about a year ago now that we would like a little bit more time to investigate. The investigation was not especially kind and we 
just felt like we'd be walking into an enormous liability and it was not wise for us to go into that and potentially screw up the whole organization over one property. Um, the other 38, 38 Chapel may have come back around so that uh, property we had rejected because at the time it was occupied, we didn't really know by who or what, but we did not feel like we were in a position to just become de facto landlords overnight. So we didn't acquire it. The property has since become empty. Um, so it's, it's kind of back in play. Um, speaking of play, so we, I think kind of the most exciting or interesting thing for, for me at least this month has been, I think finally getting some real traction and conversation with the city of Kingston about um, how property acquisitions ought to work and how to encourage the, the long-term success of the land bank. So um, for those of you that maybe aren't that familiar or just members of the public who may be listening, essentially the long and short of it is that when the land bank was set up, um, we were basically set up to pay the full price of back taxes on all the, at the time, designated surplus properties from the city of Kingston. Um, to combine that, put that tax bill at $1.048 million. Um, as many of you know, many of those properties either were vacant land that didn't have a lot of value. They were, a lot of them were properties that had major title issues. Um, in order for us to sort of effectively do affordable housing, we need to have houses with clean title or cleanable title um, so that people can get mortgages. So we pretty much walked away from those things. And then the other factor was just not having the funding that would support us paying those enormous prices while also not necessarily creating affordable housing with those properties. So we've sort of been in this bind for three years, um, during which time the city has continued to hold on to these properties and continued to pay the county and the school and not see any tax revenue from those properties and all of those associated issues. Um, so it's a pickle and there's a better way. And we know there's a better way because every other place does it a better way. So we have been advocating for a long time that uh, much like land banks nationwide, we ought to be acquiring properties for a dollar. Um, and sorry, there's a thing happening outside my window. Um, and that conversation, you know, never really took, took on because uh, for as, as long as I've lived here, certainly, um, there's been a real fixation on the city being made whole when they sell these properties. So consequently, we've submitted four, three different proposals over the last two years, um, basically not receiving much response on any of them. Um, and finally, it seems like it's happening. So uh, we're, we're, we haven't come to an agreement that we and the mayor both support, but I think we're getting close. Um, and essentially what it, what it does is allows us to acquire property for $1 when we acquire it so that when we're in a position like we're in right now where we have money for other things, but we don't have a pot of money to acquire stuff, um, that would allow us to take title to those properties, get RFPs put out, get them in pre-development, whatever kind of we're doing with them. At the point of sale, we would own, owe the city back some money. So if we're selling the, the current proposal tiers things, so if we're selling a property below 80% AMI, we would give the city X amount, uh, I hesitate to throw out a number because they keep changing, but um, between 80 and 90% would be a different amount between 90 and I might be getting these brackets slightly wrong, but 
um, basically over 130% AMI, which we wouldn't really consider affordable at that point. It's, it's basically us just trying to get rid of a property that doesn't have clean title and um, you know, we can get some good money for it to fund the rest of our work. Um, that would be a slightly different structure um, and basically same general idea with vacant land. So it will work somehow, we will get there. And I think that it's incredibly exciting because it sort of just goes back to the fundamental, what are land banks for? They are for clearing these properties and getting them back on the tax rolls and doing it efficiently and transparently and all of those things that we've been working toward for three and a half years. So um, I, I'm hopeful that we can get something in front of the council this month and I believe that they will pass it. I think it's pretty common sense legislation. And so proud of everybody for uh, sticking with this because I think it's starting to come together. Um, so I think that about sums it up for me. Uh, I will open up the public comment period. I did, sorry, can I ask one question, Daniel, yeah. on something that you said uh, back to the Opportunity Fund? You mentioned that Novo had some questions or concerns. I was just wondering if um, any of those were interesting enough to highlight. I'm trying to think. I feel like uh, one thing that came up was kind of whether, whether this does anything for like the person who is not a developer and just wants to get funding to renovate their house and then live in it. Um, the answer to that, as far as I recall, was basically that sort of turns us into a construction lender, which we really don't want to be. Um, we don't have the capacity for it and it's just a whole other field. Um, Mike, I, I don't remember. I had a couple takeaways in addition to that, but they were more just around structural questions about how is the land bank going to be administering this? And so internally, we're working on roles and responsibilities. And also there was a question about how is the land bank uh, going to be promoting this opportunity, which is a great question. Uh, just getting it out there and making sure that, you know, the information is, is shared uh, properly and widely. And so those are, those are things that we're working on uh, collectively. But I, yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, for, for them, it was, all new information. So I think it was more digesting than much one way or the other. Uh, Mike, would it be worth just quickly for, for William's sake, saying quickly what what this uh <laughs> what you've been working on with uh with um Fourth Side Speed Advisors? Yeah. So I'd be happy to if, if Daniel, if you don't mind if I jump in on no, uh, I don't want to yeah. gloss over public comments. Oh, though. sorry, oh, okay. apologies. Yeah. We have yeah. one member of the public. I'm not sure if Aneshka, you, ha you have comments or? No, I don't have any comments. I'm just here to listen. I okay. just want an update. Well, we love- And see you all and smile at you. <laughs> okay. Well, in that case, Mike, the floor is yes. yours. Thank you, sir. Um, and I will jump in a little bit to some of the details on the Kingston Housing Opportunity Fund when I run through this. So William, I'll, I'll we'll read you in. Uh, as we go. But I did want to say welcome uh, to William. This is your second meeting, as Daniel mentioned. We're so happy you're here. And it's worth noting with all the different things that we're doing and they're going on. I think it's worth just taking a second to recognize we're so happy you're on board and look forward to doing so many amazing things. So thank you very much. Um, so jumping in, uh, the pre-development pipeline uh, for the organization right now uh, as Daniel mentioned, uh, the conversations are ongoing uh, with the city of Kingston. For context, we started this round of conversations on February 22nd and uh, are hopeful 
uh, that it could make it in front of the council for this month, this week, for next month's meeting. Um, I didn't have anything to add other than what Daniel had said, other than to maybe ask, um, given kind of roles and responsibilities, uh, Nate has taken on more of an intergovernmental point person for these conversations. So I didn't know, Nate, if you had anything uh, that you wanted to add to that, but I just wanted to offer the floor. No, no, I think uh, I think Daniel's summary pretty much covered it. Um, I think it's all just, uh, we'll report back more as soon as we have more information, but I think um, things are still ongoing. Thank you. Um, and uh, also for context, the original part of this conversation, the city had indicated they thought as, as many as 12 single family properties could be offered to the land bank um, once we figure this out. So it is worth all the brain damage and uh, hand wringing and collective efforts to get to this point. So thank you, everybody who's working on this and everybody who's got their fingers crossed for this to be resolved finally. Um, under the pre-development stage, for properties that we do own. Uh, we have four properties that are in legacy cities right now. I'll get to the detail on that in a minute, um, but I would just like to give a big shout out to Daniel and Owen for helping uh, to successfully have the plans and specs and the manual J calculations for the HVAC system uh, on schedule uh, with the architect on the 15th of April. So that's an update um, from last month on that. Uh, now to get to why there are four properties and not five in legacy cities. Uh, we've been talking for about a month about the challenges uh, that are introduced by the increased costs, specifically some structural costs on Gill Street. Uh, those costs were priced out uh, in the past month by the contractor and subcontractors and came to the conclusion that it's, it's far too expensive to proceed with Gill in this legacy cities project. Um, as it currently is and what currently has to be done to it. So we're now down to four homes for Legacy Cities. We have Rogers, German, East Union, and Hurley. Um, I'm glad that we did hit pause on the closing for 30 days to finalize these costs because without knowing, otherwise we would have closed on five homes and been unable to develop five homes uh, with the funding that was available. So I think it was a good collective decision to do that and I'm happy that we did. Um, wanted to give a big shout out to uh, Kyle for all of his incredible efforts regarding uh, the budgets and the financial ins and outs regarding this project. Um, Erica has been uh, involved as well uh, for both her awareness and input, but Kyle has really championed these efforts. So big shout out. We've had to pivot a tremendous amount of times on a tremendous amount of variables that are coming at us as recently as a few hours ago. And so it's it's really helpful and greatly appreciated. And we will get to closing. Uh, the package is going, uh, we received word about, I don't know, two or three hours ago that we finalized our budget. And so that means the package is going to the state's board probably tomorrow. And that means that my understanding is that it'll go through credit committee at the state and then to the board on the 29th which would mean that we would receive approval. Last month, we got approval from the bank. This month, we get approval from the state, and that keeps us on, on target for a closing in June on that project. So that's what's going on with Legacy Cities. Uh, this does put three properties in kind of the TBD category of what to do, uh, Gill and of course, Downs and Henry Street, but uh, still trying to figure out if Legacy Cities um, is a good pathway forward for those properties or possibly some other alternatives. It would come up at ADC. Um, 151 Third Avenue, the vacant lot that we own, the only vacant lot that we own. Uh, the conversations are ongoing. My update last month was that we had sent uh, certified letters to get in contact with the lien holder. There's one outstanding issue that needs to be resolved. We have contacted that owner, um, had a conversation with them and have made you know, a settlement offer back to them. So more to come on that but we have one issue left to resolve in order to get the donation of the contiguous property. More, more to come on that probably by next month's meeting. So those are my updates for the pre-development. Um, under construction, as Daniel mentioned, uh, Green Kill looks amazing. You should go check it out. Now is the time. I wanted to give a big thanks to Owen and the design committee uh, as a collective, uh, Daniel, of course, for keeping it both on schedule and just sort of parsing through all the different 
uh, decisions that have to be made along the way to keep it there. And on 124 Franklin, uh, as Daniel mentioned, thank you so much, Owen, uh, for getting that RFP out. Um, it's been posted everywhere and circulated widely. And thank you, Daniel, for doing the social media um, updates. But uh, I sent it around to the board as well. And so if you know anyone, uh, now is the time if you would connect them with us. This is a great opportunity to help us finish out our pilot. Then down to sales updates. Uh, we will be marketing uh, the Greenkill property first, uh, possibly in May, followed by Franklin and then the Legacy Cities uh, homes. The date to commence the marketing for the sales and marketing campaign um, will be set by the marketing plan that's being put together on the comms uh, committee level. And there may be some updates from the committee report around that, but following that, we'll be able to launch the new campaign for Greenkill. Uh, also, under the sales updates would be the Pathway 3 sale for 24 Hamilton. Uh, for context, that was the license agreement that we signed on the 17th of March, and that was a 90-day license agreement. Uh, the updates for this month include the plan review, uh, discussion, submission, uh, dialogue with the potential owner and their architect. That started on the 22nd of April. And by the 5th of May, they estimated that the oil tank removal and environmental surveys will be completed. So it feels to me like that's still on schedule and they're definitely still moving forward. More to come on that next month. Uh, down to the funding updates. Uh, the Legacy City subsidy grant for which we've received the first payment already. Uh, the second payment will be uh, received by us following the board approval at the state level for, uh, for the Legacy City's funding. So hopefully uh, two weeks or so that should we should be able to submit for that funding and hopefully by the next board meeting that will have arrived. Also under the funding updates, uh, the ARPA stimulus funding uh, on the 5th of April, the uh, Common Council approved the City of Kingston's proposed plan for the spending. So if you ever watch this, um, thank you Council Member Mohammed, uh, for your support of us as always. And thank you to all the council members for uh, your support and, and trust in the work that we're doing. Um, I, I think that we're still about a year out around that funding from starting to discuss the details. The city has not hired yet, um, although they proposed funding for a, an administrator of the project. And I, I think we're a little ways off from that. So I may, I may taper some of my updates until I have something to report on the ARPA stimulus money, but possibly not. Something may happen in the next, next month or so, but I don't think that it will. Um, and then finally, the Kingston Housing Opportunity Fund. Uh, so. All this, William, thank you for your patience. Uh, just for context, the Kingston Housing Opportunity Fund uh, conversation was started with the NOVA Foundation about a year ago. And the idea was how can we, as Daniel mentioned, um, not just rehab homes, but provide opportunities or incentives for more affordable housing throughout the community without just doing the rehab ourselves. And so we had some ideas, um, NOVA had some ideas, but what they said was, uh, we'd really like you to bring in a third party consultant to come up with a, a collective plan around that. And so we, in our budget last year, we allocated funding for a consultant and we put out a public RFP of which there were two responses and we selected one consultant in December of last year and then started working with them from January until now. And at the last board meeting, uh, you, I think you may have dropped off, unfortunately, by the time they, um, by the time Forsyth Street presented but I did, I did put in the board package uh, last month. I'm happy to send it to you again, or send it to you actually, um, the details of the program and the PowerPoint for the program and all that. But in essence, it's pre-construction lending. It's, it's not, as Daniel mentioned, it's not construction financing, it's not permanent financing, and it allows people to have the ability to sort of go out and do all the due diligence they have to do to figure out how much it costs. And during that period, we would be helping to connect them with things like state programs for affordable housing, potentially with construction lenders and, and try to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And the best part about it is, well, most interesting part about it from a, a capacity standpoint and from an output standpoint is that we recycle the funding. So when we have a construction loan closing, we get paid back for that pre-development and then we can lend that money again. So it's an exciting program. And I will send you uh, those details. We have that. Cool. Um, one other series of items uh, that I usually throw under just the other bucket. Uh, 
team photos. I'm so sorry, but I'm still working to uh, wrangle everyone to do team photos for all of us. So talking to a, a few local vendors about that, uh, hope to circulate some doodle poll uh, items and figure out the location and, and get all that. I think it's helpful to have up on our website, like pictures of everybody. So that's what that is. And that's my update on that. I'm um, also uh, interviewing some social media firms uh, that could help us increase our capacity, given that we're, we're basically doubling uh, the number of homes that we're working on this year and we have a bunch of other exciting things going on. Might be time to start to talk to some more, uh, get, some, get a little bit more resources around those efforts. So more to come on that. Uh, I did mention last month, the New York Land Bank Association is holding uh, somewhat of an annual conference. It's in collaboration with some other groups, but that's in Syracuse on June 8th and 9th and 10th. And so Erica, Owen, April, and myself will likely be attending. And that's uh, that's ha happening. So last month it was a little bit fuzzy, but this month I can tell you that it is happening. So we will send calendar invites just so people know kind of where we're at. We'll certainly still be plugged in, but we might have to step out of a conference or something uh, to get back to you. A um, couple other updates. I put in the board package two slightly confusing memos related to open meetings law. Uh, my read of them is that it's very likely the case that in June we will have to start going back to in-person meetings. So more to come on that as it evolves, but those two memos are the best information that I have on what is probably happening. Um, so look forward to seeing you all probably in City Hall conference room number two. We have the room reserved uh, starting in June. And uh, also this month, um, it appears to be the case that the uh, Ulster County has made an application to ESD, to the state, uh, to ask for permission to form a countywide land bank. I wanted to mention it you know, I think this is a good format to just throw that out there. I don't have any other information other than that. Uh, they will be proposing to fund it with some of the county's ARPA stimulus funding. For context, the, this has happened before as recently as 2020 and it, it didn't really go anywhere because the state doesn't want to have overlap between a city within a county that already has a land bank. So more to come on that probably, but, but the application has been submitted by the county to the state. Mike, nobody oh, reached out. I just was curious, nobody reached out to you in advance. You just heard about it. That's correct. That's correct. I I, I do think collectively there might there might be a request from the state for the county and this and the Kingston City Land Bank to sort out what happens in Kingston in writing. That would make sense to me that the state would want that to be organized before they really considered this, but no one reached out to me or to my knowledge, anyone else before submitting this. So. Have you There's thought that. about reaching out to the county? Well, I, I learned about it from the county. I did, I did, oh, oh, I did right. But they mentioned it in passing kind of as an after the fact, by the way. Not, not the like fact. a let's chat and coordinate and no. Okay. No. So, you know, just by what Dennis Doyle has been talking about this for a while, but nothing really happened until until this month. So it didn't come completely out of the blue, but it was a surprise that they actually did it. I have one last small item, but it is a request. Um, I do receive uh, transcriptions of all the voicemails that come into our voicemail box. And one came in today from a Spanish speaker and I'd like to respond to them, but I don't speak Spanish. Is there anyone, I wanted to just throw it out to the full board. Is there anyone who could help me or connect me with someone who's Spanish language speaking to get back to them? You can I mean, email I speak, me or Alana. I speak Spanish, so I'm happy to do it you. if that's helpful, but if somebody else speaks Spanish native, they should do it before me. Okay. Um, maybe I'll reach out to you, Alana, and, right. and that would be awesome. Thank you very much. That's my update. So now it's back to, okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> acquisition. Be, before you continue, uh, thanks everyone. I'm going to say good night. Well, Namaste.
as they say in India. Hi, Anashka. Nice to see you. Great to see you. Thank you, Mike, for that report. That was great. Don't be Bye, a everybody. Don't be a stranger. Come back again. I will. I will. You can definitely count on me every month, but we'll see what happens in between. All right. Bye bye. Talk to you soon. Um, okay. Acquisition, disposition, and construction. Oh, exciting. I'll be as quick as I can be. Franklin, as we know, uh, the Franklin uh, RFP for a general contractor went out. So it's great. We're looking for feedback and we hope there's lots of people who are interested in the work at a reasonable price in our second attempt here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fold this into so what's, one of the things we talked about was 111 downs and what to do with the garage. And we got a low bid from uh, Villa Fuente, who has done business with us before, and we like him. And uh, we've asked him to also give us a revised bid for re-roofing that would include the necessary structural work uh, to, do the, to do the project instead of just re-roofing it. We have two bids, one to take it down, the garage, and one to re-roof it. Um, but we talked about that, and the next step will be once we get these bids. Thank you, Owen, for getting these bids, by the way. Um, we will... Uh, consult with the finance committee to see what we can afford before we make a recommendation to the board. So we're waiting for the revised bids and then we'll talk with the finance committee about what it costs and how much money we have before we make a joint recommendation to the board about whether to demolish the garage or whether to replace the roof on the garage. Um, we decided to hold off on the purchase of Abby and Stefan until we work on a revised acquisition process with the city, which I think is going we actually got a counter proposal and now we're negotiating with them. This is a huge advance over the, over the history of, of our interaction with the, with the county or with the, with the city. So that's a good thing. So I think we'll get to, we'll get to an agreement ultimately. Hamilton negotiations are on track. Mike's doing a great job with that. Thank you. Green kills on schedule. Thank you with that. Legacy cities, we did talk about Gill and we talked about the foundation and the, and the additional cost. And I think the solution to take it out of the legacy cities is a good one. Um, AMI, we talked about AMI and how that will be issued and that will help us determine our pricing. And three of the proposers on the, on the Henry Street project have asked for a debrief. One of them we wrote back to and they seemed satisfied. One asked for a, uh, for a debrief and we said, great but they've not responded. And the third that's asked for a debrief uh, is gonna to happen tomorrow. And uh, I, the nice part about it is it's one of the proposers I think that has a future with us. So it'll be interesting to talk with her about, about her proposal and about why we found it to be, uh, why we decided not to sell the building. It isn't like she, it isn't like she lost to someone else if we decided not to sell. And her proposal was pretty well done. So I think, I think she's someone that we should continue to keep in our network. And I think she might be a future asset for picking up properties. Um, and that's it. How's that? Was I quick enough? Did I, how'd I do, Daniel? <laughs> He's gone. He didn't care. You did great as I blow my nose. I got COVID. Um, <laughs> everything's going great. Um, thank you. But uh Owen, before we, not to speak out of turn, should we be doing a not to exceed vote on the downstreet project just so that we could go into contract this month? Because we have a price on the demolition and we have a price on a previous scope. So if we gave it a little bit of wiggle room. I, I think there was also some conversation that was gonna take place with finance as well around how this is working and like what we're, yeah, we're using. We're gonna, we're gonna cycle it through finance to see what we can afford. Okay. As so you're probably, as gonna, you're probably gonna lose a month anyway. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, sorry. No problem. Daniel, Mike and Bob already hit some of my uh, headlines already. So, <laughs> um, uh, as Bob mentioned, Green Kill is broadly on schedule. I think we are going to get these um, windows in a late, little bit later than we wanted, and so that might lose us a week or two. But in 
the big cycle doing pretty well there. Um, as you heard, Franklin RFP is out. Um, the uh, this is like a big one for me of like what's happening right now. I think it's really important for us to focus on um, this and I'm, I'm trying to do my best to uh, wrangle as many contractors to pay attention to what we're doing as possible with this. Um, if anybody is interested in joining in on the contractor harassment, I have volunteer opportunities for you. Um, July is the target start date for that project for construction. Um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to, to plant the seed and, and not, I don't, I don't mean to, uh, take time here, but just plant the seed just because one of the, I mean, we, we've always known this is a, an issue for us, but, uh, just really getting a lot of feedback from contractors about it right now. Just the fact that our RFPs have previously, and this one as well, are structured that like we ask for them to give proposals and then, then like we need them to start construction very soon. And so it's just, it's just something for us to think about going forward as far as getting success with lining up contractors that I just, I just can just tell you that I could double the amount of contractors that I'm, that are paying attention if we could give them more of a runway for lead up. So nothing to do about it right this second, just want to plant the seed to continue talking about it. Uh, legacy cities, as was mentioned, um, permit set is complete. Construction documents are not totally complete, but we were working on that. That is the plan to get the permit set in so we can get um, building permits on these buildings. If you don't already know, we have a demolition permit already on um, Gills. So we could do exploratory demo, though, as you heard, we're punting that project. Um, permit applications are in, I believe, from our GC contractor partner. Um, and as you heard, we're working on closing the funding. And that, that, that whole batch of houses is going to be a sort of soft start to construction, you know, rather than in, they're not going to be construction happening at all five houses, full bore right off the bat. Um, one of the houses being started earlier and some of the other houses we have asbestos to deal with. So it'll be a little bit more staged, a little bit more spread out than um, it all, everything happening simultaneously. So that's kind of a get started soon. And we will continue to be hearing about that batch of legacy, legacy cities houses this year and into next year. Any questions on what's happening with construction? All right. <laughs> Thank you, Owen. Uh, Talk to you soon. Um, good, to, good to meet you, William. By the way, I'm the construction project manager for the Kingston City Land Bank. <laughs> uh, could I ask one question for Owen, which is the walkthroughs? Which yes. are, they, are they happening on the second? Is that correct? There's there's one uh, that I'm planning to do on the the second and one on the fourth. And what time are those? Three p.m. on the um, second and ten a.m. on the fourth. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sure. And and I don't know if it's uh, if you if you're asking for yourself or for to pass it on if if it is uh, passing on the information to contractors they they should uh, get in touch with us so we can just know who's coming and plan that out. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, finance and audit, Nate. Take it away. All right. Um, what do you want the the report on financials or or Erica? Do you want to talk about the uh, audit first? Whichever you prefer. Let's just go in order. I think the audits on the on the agenda first. So I'll I'll 
kick it to you first and then I can go over the financial report. Um, so not much to report for the audit other than we're still waiting on the auditor to come back. Uh, we sent an email to him on Friday of last week and then another um, email, sorry, it was the week before that. And then another email just checking in with him. He confirmed that his team is reviewing everything and he'll get back to us. So that's all we know so far. And we will keep you posted as we get closer to an answer, unfortunately. All right, cool. Thanks, Erica. Um, for the March financial report, you should all have it in the board package. Um, I'm, you know, for the most part, these financial reports really speak for themselves. Um, I've also been, I created a new folder in our Google Drive where I'm saving all of these. So if you ever need to go back and want to take a look at them, they are now in there, organized by month. You can take a look. Um, so I'm not going to um, use a lot of time to go through each and everything, but I want to highlight um, a lot of the um, big ticket items in this month's report. So looking first at the uh, income on the profit and loss statement, um, you know, a big chunk of that income is a uh, $625,000 from Novo. Um, this uh, most of this is um, part of the uh, Legacy City subsidy. Um, there were a couple other uh, pieces of income that were smaller donations that also came in around three forty three hundred forty five dollars. So you'll see that in the uh, income section on expenses. Uh, a couple of the bigger items here um, we have about. Uh, $1,800 for office, office expenses. So um, a lot of this is uh, paying for our software like Zoom for the, for the full year, um, as well as six months of payments for QuickBooks and bill.com. So um, this represents like a big chunk of time. So that's why this is a lot more than it typically would be. Um, going down, you'll see uh, on under uh, item 6,000, you'll see uh, $24,000. That is for um, demolition at 124 Franklin. So that was added in this past month. And then there was also, let me just pull out my notes. We've got um, $10,811 for construction materials. Um, there was a item of $5,196. This was a reimbursement of uh, purchases for Jessica Farkas design related to 174 Hasbrook. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the report, um, but that, that this short story here is that that was um, sort of a, a, some prior expenses that had already been spent and just need to be reimbursed. Um, and then the other big item is the $82,000 in change paid to Meta Construction for the completed work at 149 Green Hill. Um, so overall, um, you know, we're in good financial shape. Um, like I said, I, I won't go through each and every part of the balance sheet, but please, um, take a couple of moments to review that. And if you have questions, please let me or Erica know. Um, a couple other things to report from our last finance committee meeting. Um, we touched on this a little bit earlier as well, but um, we're gonna be working on having a little bit more coordination between finance and ADC. Um, so we can have a little more visibility on the financial aspects of the purchase and approval process and our project budgets and things like that. Um, so uh, nothing um, substantive to report on that yet, but just wanted to, to mention it. Um, the other piece is that we're also gonna be working on um, trying to put together a better purchase and approval process. Um, not for obviously like our big construction expenses that have many layers of approvals, but 
you know, there are certain things that don't have a, a sort of streamlined approval process, one of which was um, that bigger design expense I mentioned earlier. There was something that like needed to be reimbursed, had been earmarked, but it was like a little bit of a surprise because it was for funds that happened a while ago. So we're just trying to have a better um, system to approve um, and, and track these items. So um, more to report on that, hopefully by the next meeting. And finally, um, I know we're still a ways off, but we wanted to just sort of kick off the conversation about the ARPA funds from the city. Um, you know, even though we're a long way off, it's good to just start brainstorming and, and trying to um, come up with ideas of what we want to use that, how we want to um, utilize it towards the properties, towards other initiatives. So um, I guess you can sort of treat this like an internal RFP if you have your own proposals on like what you think uh, you that we should be doing with those with those funds that we're getting. Um, send them to me. I'm going to start keeping a list and and compiling them. And then as we get further in the process, and um, you know the city is hiring this this manager to help oversee those funds. Um, hopefully we can be part of those conversations and have a lot more to present and, and be better prepared once the time comes. So that's it. Any questions? Okay. Then, do I have to call for for the vote or is that I still haven't figured out the process for this I also haven't <laughs> uh, any any board member can can call for a motion at and at any time for anything pretty much is my understanding of the rules so if you would like to you're more than welcome sure um I will call for a motion to approve the treasurer's report on the monthly financials I'll move. I'll move. Second. I'll move it. Second. Second. Seconded by Minya. Uh, uh, all. Oh, go ahead, Daniel. All in favor of uh, accepting our April 2022 treasurer's report. Aye. Aye. Great. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, all right. fundraising. Hello, um, so I'm gonna try to be quick because there are a number of different things to touch upon. Um, first, uh, Minya and I each set up a meeting. Um, uh, the meeting that I set up was with Charles Blakeman, who is the developer and owner of the Kingstonian and um, owns, um, I always forget the name of the pizza place that's down there um, that's in, in, in Uptown, um, and, as well as a number of other projects in the region. He's a big developer from New York City. He owns a lot of property um, and is also just doing now uh, real estate development in the Hudson Valley. Um, we were supposed to be with him on Saturday. He signed on, him and his son, Noah, he signed on a few minutes late, uh, told us his, his son had COVID and they needed to reschedule. Um, uh, we. <laughs> I don't know if I should say that publicly in the, the board meeting, but I, I just did. So uh, um, uh, we're, we're gonna reschedule that meeting, um, uh, um, but it was nice of him to sign on and, and, and we'll hopefully be talking to him soon. Um, Minya set up a call with, uh, or a meeting, sorry, with uh, Brad Jordan, the owner of Herzog's um, and uh, the co-developer of the Kingstonian project, um, as well as a number of other things in, in town, as we all, we all know, who they are, who the family is. Um, so Minya or Mike, I don't know if Minya, you wanted to give a quick update of what that, what happened from that meeting and what's kind of occurred as a result. Or I, I can just summarize it from where you two have explained it to me if you'd like. I mean, if you're comfortable, absolutely. Sure. So from my understanding, um, he was very supportive. He seems to understand what the, uh, kind of what the land bank is doing. Um, it wasn't a direct ask of him, kind of, you know, please donate kind of thing. It was more of an open-ended conversation um he uh um afterwards though 
there were a few kind of constructive things. Um, he, he put Mike, uh, put the Lambic in touch with the Rondot Savings Bank where he's on the board. Um, unfortunately, um, Mike met with Rondot Savings Bank and, and um, they're not, uh, at the moment, it, they're not qualified to, to kind of be one of our lenders. Um, but maybe in time, it's a relationship to keep um, kind of open to uh, as their certifications change. Um, we also, he uh, uh, said he would pass around uh, word to GCs in the area of our projects um, as we release RFPs. So as, um, I know that we've had trouble in the past getting GCs to apply. And so hopefully he will be a resource um, in that light, in that area. And then the third thing that happened was that he uh, said that we could have um, that the land bank could use Herzog's um, uh, to have free storage um, uh, on site, which would uh, be to huge benefit to our GCs, so that they would didn't don't have to worry about uh, you know gaming out the timeline as they buy as they buy materials. You could just buy it from Herzog's at cost. Sorry, that's the other thing he said is you could buy stuff at cost from Herzog's. Um, was that right, Mike? Or am I misremembering? My recollection is that we didn't flesh out all of the details of yeah. it, but that he was he was offering a framework to try to help us reduce costs and store stuff. Um, yeah, hurts our which yeah, like, which would be very helpful. Totally. Um, so uh, that's that. Um, in terms of kind of uh, things coming up, um, there are a few events and other thing and other things we are planning. Um, First, uh, we had discussed the idea of doing a landscaping event at Green Kill um, and Bartek, I know I owe you an email, apologies for that. Um, uh, originally, this event was discussed as a, as a fundraising opportunity. To be entirely honest, from my understanding, the last time the land bank, I wasn't on the board then, did a, fun, did a, did a landscaping event. Not, you know, few if any uh, non-board members showed up. Um, uh, which I can understand not everyone wants to get their hands dirty. Um, uh, but I think it's a worthwhile event, both, both to improve the landscaping of the house, but also frankly, because we've all been virtual and it, it's a time for all of us to meet each other. So we can use it in kind of both, both capacities as a, as a um, uh, kind of spread the word around Kingston, try to fundraise a little bit, but also just get out there as a board, whoever wants to join on the 15th of May to do some landscaping at Green Kill. Um, we also uh, um, have been reaching out to, Mini and I in particular, reaching out to farmers markets and other um, events in the area to get tables, um, to just do some kind of small dollar fundraising and also just general community outreach. Um, and so on uh, Mini, I believe May 14th, right? That's what you put on the calendar. On May 14th, um, we're gonna have a table at the Midtown uh, Market that's gonna be in the Radio Kingston lot. Um, it's a new market that's starting and, and Minnie will be taking the lead on that. And um, I'll be out there and anybody else that wants to join can come join. Um, I, I think as, as the date gets closer, I'll, we'll send an email around so that people are aware and, and um, can, can say it if they wanna join. Um, we also are gonna have a booth this summer at the Uptown Farmers Market on two weekends, um, May, uh, May 28th and July 23rd. Um, and uh, all of these dates, by the way, there is now a, um, a thing called the 2022 fundraising calendar, which so far doesn't have too much on it, but there are a few things there. You can find that in the drive. Um, but again, I'll, we'll be setting up a booth to fundraise, to talk about what we do at the Uptown Farmers Markets on those two days. Um, and again, as, as the dates, gets, dates get closer, we'll send around um, notices to everybody. People can sign up. Um, to take shifts if they want or whatever it else, whatever else we need on those days. Um, uh, two more things to touch upon. First, um, uh, Minya, I, I think I, I would ask you because I actually don't know that much of uh, maybe provide an update on, on your meeting with, um, with Katie Dwyer Design. Um, for a little background, we had discussed um, redoing the logo um, and Minya reached out to Katie Dwyer Design and had a meeting with them. And I think the, uh, the scope of what, of what they're gonna propose on has shifted slightly um, or, ch or gotten slightly larger. So I'll, I'll, I'll hand it off to you, Minya, for a moment. Sure, um, so I had a meeting with um, 
with Katie Dwyer on uh, Friday morning, and uh, they're going to give us two different proposals. One is to redesign the um, rebrand the logo, and the other one um, is to uh, give us a proposal based on um, handling our social media marketing plan. And that will be coming in um, the first week of May. And the basically we just went over. Um, needs. Um, she had some great ideas and um, has quite a bit of experience. They just finished the Repco site. Um, so they have some experience with um, dealing with housing in the community and, and she's pretty well versed. So that helps. And th basically, that's at the end there. They, uh, I, I didn't have to lead a lot of the meeting because she was pretty well, she really understands a lot of what was going on. So that's just going to take the lead. And then we'll have that hopefully first, at least by the end of the week of May. We can take it from there. And Great. Thank you, Minya. Um, and then last but not least, um, uh, I think last month, um, Mike and I had, at that point, we had met with three different consultants about potentially doing a strategic plan initiative. Um, the consultant that we, uh, um, I think, preferred um, uh, uh, had a much higher cost than the other two consultants. Um, it, the reasons for why it, are, it has to do with, with people trying to qualify for the, for the Dyson Foundation grant. Anyways, we, rather than go with one of the other two, um, we started a conversation about how we can fill that gap, um, given that we don't have a huge amount of money out, you know, direct money allocated to, um, to the strategic plan process. Um, and Mike, uh, um, applied to the state, sorry, to the county um, uh, through its through their ARPA funds um, uh, uh, for for some additional money that would fill that gap. Um, and so we hope to hear back next month. In the meantime, we're going to have conversations with the consultants' references um, uh, to just make sure that that that's the route we want to take if we can fill that gap. Um, and so hopefully. Um, either, either hopefully by our next meeting, uh, we'll have um, a little more information about, about what that process will look like and if we have money for it and who we'll go with, because um, I think it'd be great to get started on it um, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, but that's, that's everything I have from the fundraising side of things. Thank you. I don't know if this is relevant, but I thought it was interesting if something that did come out of the meeting um, with Brad Jordan was the restrictions on training and um, certification for plumbers in Kingston yeah. and how that creates quite a backlog and um, can slow construction down quite impressively and that Kingston has its own restrictive process of getting certified and training in, in the city that's not um, consistent with other local cities as far as I understand it's a bit outdated um, and because I'm not a contractor I don't know that I'll get this it wrong but when it when soldering was involved in piping that was it sort of dated back to when that was still an issue and you needed more training um, so what um, Brad Jordan recommended was that we talk um, specifically to Steve Knox and to the Common Council and that is in process right now being discussed to see if there's any way to change that um the that process so that um that would open up to maybe even offering apprenticeships in, in that's my understanding correct me if i'm wrong like um with our construction process to help people in the city get certified and be able to offer more um people that we would be able to have in future but also have people who would otherwise not necessarily be eligible for that training in a certain amount of time so Mike, if, I don't know if you, if you think it's necessary to go further into that, but I just thought that was some good news. Um, the um, Common Council, the committee leader is going to be meeting with Steve Knox soon, and we'll see what that turns out. So, so just for, Mike explained this to me after the meeting, I had no idea. I, I took a deep dive into uh, Kingston City plumbing law. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know if anybody else knows, knew this, but the city of Kingston, unlike other cities, um, uh, if you are just certified with a state that is not sufficient to do to, to be a plumber in the city of Kingston, you have to have a, spe a special per a special um, license from the city of Kingston, um, which severely limits the pool of plumbers um, uh, and um, essentially has created uh, a kind of plumbing cartel in the city of Kingston, which is interesting. Uh, but 
filing. And yeah, Dan, I'm texting with Daniel, by the way, he somehow dropped off, but he's trying to get back on. Let's not go low to the flies just yet. Well, I guess that means it goes to Bob, right? It does, technically. That means I have to do something? Oh, no. Um, it's all you, Bob. <laughs> um, the, Here we go. Not, you know, it's not uncommon for for places to have li uh, special licensing for within their cities in the state. It's not, you know, and it's as we all as we all know, it is a way to to uh, control the number of plumbers and electricians. Uh, you'll find same kind of thing in electricians. They might even be worse, but that's another a whole nother thing. Um, so now we're moving to communication. Are we moving to communications and community engagement? Well, that would be next. All right. Who, who? I don't know. I don't know who the chair is. Who's the chair of communications? And ah, Minya. Okay, <laughs> go for it. All right. So a lot has already been covered. I'll try to keep it short. Um, some of the, a lot of a, a good portion of this has been covered by other committee leaders and Mike and Daniel. Um, so basically, what I'll keep it to is. Um, uh, follow up with the ambassador program that we were talking about. Um, there's a good model um, uh, that we're going to work with and base ours on from the Broom City Land Trust. It's a pretty good one. It seems to be very successful. It seems to be very applicable to what we could um, apply to the land bank. Um, and whereas there would be training and a stipend um, involved and a matter, and then the, basically the next steps is uh, um, Bartech is going to be writing up that process of training. Mike was is most likely going to be offering the training, a virtual training, hopefully, and we'll get that going, um, you know, as soon as feasibly possible. And then we'll have we'll include that process in our social media marketing package. And so mostly what I'm going to be talking about is just getting the word out for our promo campaigns of upcoming promos basically for Green Kill. Um, we have MIT has offered to do financial literacy training free of charge um, to hopefully for people who are um, eligible. And that would be really helpful. We need to get the word out about that. And we have to need, get dates um, basically nailed down for when that training will be so that they can start putting the word out and that we can be putting the word out for the training. Um, and then we have options to do some promos on upcoming radio spots. We're still ironing out the shows that we're doing. And um, right now, I mean, we've already talked about the um, RFPs going out to Franklin. We wanna let people know about that. We wanna get a newsletter going and get that sent out. Um, also to the people who have already applied um, to previous homes and who are on our list, as well as some of the people who have applied recently we want to get the word out to them to let them know that they're eligible and to know what the upcoming training programs, what we're going to be able to offer for potential um, homeowners or applicants. And, um, and then also we want to get the word out there about the fundraiser and the, um, the, the um, landscaping event as well. Um, as far as I know, I think that's it. We also have, um, uh, Repsco, Repsco, Repco and the Hudson River Pastone, which can help us with some of the outreach um, for these for this upcoming process. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> Stop. Sorry, just going. No, it's okay. <laughs> just uh, just wanted to mention in, instead of uh, it's actually Hudson River Housing and Pastone. Oh, and housing. Oh, housing. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. And pretty much, um, it's a matter of uh, of ironing out our. Uh, um, outreach process. Um, William is, has offered to help us with that as well to get the word out there into the community as he has a long-standing member of the community and has quite a far reach. So thank you, William, even though you're not on our comms committee, I'm so grateful that you're offered to help us get the word out there. Um, Alana's offered to help um, canvas the neighborhood around um, Greenkill and organize that, that campaign. And then basically what I have is the rest is we've covered already in terms of like city um, and um, 
the homes that are coming with that. And really that just boils down to when we wanna get the information um, out there about that process or if we wanna include that in the newsletter. And that should start going to the process uh, first week of May or next week. And if I've missed anything, please let me know. Thank you. Sorry, I dropped off my, I don't know what happened. Erin, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. The landscaping event, are we still saying May? I thought we were saying June. Sorry, you're right. I. Good. <laughs> You're absolutely no, right. I, I think there would be a dump trailer in May. So I sold the. I said the old date. Not. It's like now, like June 9th or something like that. But I. I will get. Well, I'll send around something so people don't have to remember the dates. But you're absolutely right. It's June 18th. Yeah. There we go. It's June 18th. Thank you, Bartek. So at that point, the house should, I believe, be done. So we could also consider coupling it with like an open house kind of thing. We did a, a ribbon cutting at Van Buren and I feel like it was people like, especially from the neighborhood, like really like coming in and seeing the house. And so we could consider that. Anyway, we can talk about that at another time. <laughs> um, so, okay. And then I think Minya, it's right back to you for governance, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so part of this, we've already taken care of. We had William, that was part of our project, was to get a new board member to fill the vacancy. So welcome, William. So happy to have you here. Um, so that was that was part of our, our last meeting. Um, and then um, we've already changed, I believe we've already approved the, the, the bylaws that we had to change um, from binding to, is that Go ahead, Mike, I see you going to say something. <laughs> All right, just reaching for the mute button. I, yes. I just, um, technically the bylaws, are, they're required to be read for two months prior to a vote. So this okay. is our second reading and a vote uh, this at this meeting. At this meeting, okay. So what? So that particular bylaw, especially at William, because you have been here. So our, our what we're changing in our bylaws, and hopefully I get this right, we're changing, um, uh, allowing five people maximum per committee, where it was four is my understanding before. And we're changing um, the individual committee meetings from a binding um, to being, from being a, a, an, um, from binding to advisory. So we can advise what we think would change, but it has to go to vote for the full board. Um, we can't finalize any changes. Um, and then um, the next um, vote we have on is on the changes of conflict of interest in our clause and bylaws. And to that note, also just a reminder to everybody, if you haven't received the email I sent out to fill out the ethics, um, the uh, ethics document that I set out um, and financial disclosure document, I can send it to you again. Um, but as soon as you can get that out to me, um, the better. And I can resend that if you need to. So just send me an email if you need it again, or let me know here. And, um, and I think that um... Minya, can I add something to what you were to sure. the to the uh, uh, because of Minya's good work and our conversations with our attorney, just so that you know, the financial disclosure forms will go uh, through Minya to our attorney, and our attorney will keep them. So that's that's the story of them. They're not particularly in depth, and I've done mine. It's not it's not uh, it's not scary. Uh, okay. for as far as financial disclosure ter, uh, forms are concerned but that's where they end up so if anybody who had any concern about what happens to them uh and that's the story to, sorry thanks bob and they no. and they have to store them electronically they don't have the space to have a printed form so that's why we have to do it that way and the only other thing i'd want to say about the disclosure form is if you haven't filled it out there's a there's a section that can be a little confusing where it's really just asking, it's the first section, it's just asking where your income is coming from. As far as I understand, you do not have to state the exact amount. If I'm wrong, let me know, but you just have to state where um, you have um, external income coming from and that first section, um, because I did get at questions asked about what that particular section meant um, as it, the wording was a little confusing. Yeah, and that's my understanding as well. You, you don't have to, yeah. yeah, it's where it's from not how much right right 
Okay. And then, so do we want to put that to vote now or go ahead? All right. So anyone want to um, put forth a motion to vote on the changes to the bylaws that I just discussed? I'd like to make a motion to vote on the okay. by aforementioned bylaws. <laughs> Any I'll second? second it. Okay. I'll Thank second you. it. Okay. Um, all in favor? So unanimous. <laughs> all right. Thank you. So that passes the resolution to approve the changes in the bylaws. And so one other thing I wanted to say is that just so people know, if you want to attend another committee meeting, just to see what's going on, you're more than welcome to, you just don't have a vote at that meeting. But if, if, you know, you're more than welcome to join any meeting at any time. Um, they're very lively and entertaining. Um, so, and I believe that's it for now. There's a small aspect of what we talked about because at that time we were trying to fill the vacancy quickly and because we were in between um, the turnover of board members at that time where everybody applies and then we just make a decision on who would be a best fit and with our interviews that the possibility is open and I'm not sure if there needs to be a vote on this or just discussion on this of that if we know people who are actually interested like in this case and William was interested that that would be a great fit for the board that we can recommend that person to apply to the board and then we can interview them if we personally know them um, in the terms of saving time because especially with the upcoming campaigns we need help as soon as we can get like in those kind of situations if somebody somehow dropped out or wasn't part of the board anymore so that was discussion i don't know if we need to make a vote on that being okay uh being outside of our normal process when regular board members step down because they've served their term i'm asking just so i'm understanding it, the question is whether it's okay for a board member to recommend a member of the public to join the board right without going necessarily through a whole process again when we're limited in time right i would to me it's it's fine and i just remind that the mayor makes the final appointment call right so. right of course yes sorry That's left that out that we make the recommendation to the mayor and then the mayor makes well no i'm just saying like no thank you no it, it does it, um, it, I was yeah, I'm not different to me I, I think right realistically in the city of kingston everyone's gonna know someone so it's right <laughs> so all right and that's that's pretty much it from my side unless anyone wants to add anything Uh, as stated on the agenda, design committee did not meet. It's It's been a sort of active month with legacy cities and figuring out primarily the budgets um, and how to sort of hybridize our owner supplied stuff that we've, and design stuff that we've done with the pilot and sort of uh, adjust it for legacy cities so that our houses Thank you. Um, <laughs> technical terms. Uh, we have no members of the public remaining, so I guess we skip that. Any new business to announce? I would just note um, again, whenever anybody wants to see any of the houses, especially legacy cities now that things are starting kind of soon. Um, I think it's it's really fun to walk through them, brings it all home, literally. Uh, so I don't know, Do, should we try to like set a day, like a couple hour block and make it a field trip? Is there interest? Yeah, okay, maybe I'll throw some dates out over email and see if we can, get something on the calendar. Um, 
but it's a it's a broad array of of homes and eras and styles and it's gonna be fun i would like to see it let's 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 do it all right um, all right any other new business Guess it's not a new, it's not new business at all, but I don't think we voted on last board's minutes. Didn't, did we decide we don't have to do that because oh. they're recorded? So in the ever-changing rules around all of this, uh, several months ago, it became the case that this video recording constitutes the minutes for public authorities. And so by posting them, which we do in a timely manner, that shall constitute uh, we, we take an extra step and Bartek as secretary circulates the votes so that those are all in your board package. But this is the minutes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. But thank as, you. As, as our elected officials are learning, re recordings can be very important in the future. <laughs> Did you want to elaborate on that? Is there hot gossip? Or... Uh, no, no, no. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> I feel like it would be okay to share. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I will entertain a motion to adjourn if there's nothing else. So moved. Need a second. All in favor of adjourning April 2022's board meeting. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. See you in committees and whatnot. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Bye. See you. Good night. All right. Good night, everyone.